Number 40. Three children are riding on the edge of a merry-go-round that is 100 kilograms, has a 1.6 meter radius, and is spinning at 20 RPM. The children have masses of 22, 28, and 33 kilograms. If the child who has a mass of 28 kilograms moves to the center of the merry-go-round, what is the new angular velocity in RPM? All right, so it sounds complicated, all right? And there's a lot of things going on, a lot of given information. Here's basically the overall picture, all right? Take a minute to just look it over. And what we have to realize is that we have changing conditions, right? Initially, the merry-go-round is moving with this angular velocity, 20 revolutions per minute, RPM. And we got three children, each located at a certain point relative to the axis of rotation. What's going to happen is that the 28 kilogram child right here, okay, this 28 kilogram child is going to then move to the center. And we have to find out how will this angular velocity change? So you have to think about this in two stages, right? In terms of, you know, we, we would like to think about it as an initial and a final state. Okay, initially this is the condition. Okay, these are the conditions. The final state is when we move this mass to the middle, okay? So now we have to understand, is anything being conserved? All right, that's my first thought process. Is anything being conserved in this process, right? The thing's rotating, all right? We're not adding any friction. It doesn't say frictionless, but I'm assuming there's no friction basically to, uh, to, to remove energy from the system in terms of heat. And that being the case, I realize that yes, there is, right? Conservation of angular momentum, okay? You've done momentum problems in the past, and we've now done some angular momentum problems in the present. Um, and this is just a conservation of angular momentum problem. And that being said, we then know that the angular momentum, which is L, okay, initially should equal the angular momentum finally. Okay. So what is the angular momentum? Well, the angular momentum is simply the moment of inertia of the system, of the total system, multiplied by the total system's angular velocity. So I can now write this, that the moment, uh, moment of inertia initially multiplied by the angular velocity initially should equal the moment of inertia finally mul uh, multiplied by the angular velocity finally. Right? What variable are we after? Well, we're after, it says, what is the new angular velocity, aka the final right angular velocity in RPM? Now, don't worry about it being in RPM, all right? I just, I know I have to solve for this variable. So let me just do that right off the bat here. So we're going to have um, omega, the final angular velocity will equal then the initial moment of inertia multiplied by the initial angular velocity, all divided then by the final moment of inertia. Okay. So now I really need to try to pin down the initial uh, moment of inertia. So there's really four objects rotating, okay, in this problem. One will be the merry-go-round. Two will be this mass, three will be this mass, and fourth will be this mass. Okay, so we got four things rotating. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, at the top here, just to save a little space, I'm going to write now that the initial um, moment of inertia will be equal to the moment of inertia for the merry-go-round plus the moment of inertia for the child one or mass one, right, plus the moment of inertia for child two plus the moment of inertia for child three. Okay. So what is the moment of inertia for the merry-go-round? Well, you have to understand the nature and how the the nature of the rotation and how the mass is distributed over that rotation. I'm assuming that it's going to be a flat disk. All right, this merry-go-round that's in black here in the problem. I'm assuming that the the mass here is evenly distributed over the entire rotating body. Okay, so it has a disk-like shape. It's rotating about a center axis of rotation, and therefore I know the picture and I know the formula to be mr squared all over 2, okay? That is the formula for a disk, all right? Now, um, I'm going to simp... I'm not going to simplify. I'm going to specify what mass. This is the mass of the merry-go-round multiplied by the radius of that merry-go-round squared all over 2. Then, plus now the moment of inertia for the first child. Now, the first child we're going to treat as a point mass, and this point mass is rotating right around this center right here. There is no mass between the mass of the child and the axis of rotation. Therefore, I need to look and find a picture that approximates what I'm talking about, right? This mass is going to be rotating around the axis of rotation. So there's no mass at all distributed from the child to the axis of rotation. So the easiest picture would be that of a hoop, okay? So this child's mass is approximated by the formula of a hoop. So that's just simply going to be the mass of that child multiplied by the radius 
of the rotation, okay, between the axis of rotation and the mass squared, okay? Then, same thing for child two. I'm not gonna discuss it because it's literally the same discussion, so that's M2 times R2 squared. Then for the same thing for the third child, right? So this is gonna be M3 R3 squared, okay? This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the total moment of inertia, okay? For the initial state. Okay, for the initial state. And guess what? This will also be, in terms of formula, this will also be the final and uh, the final moment of inertia as well, in terms of formula, right? Because we still have four objects, right? Four objects might be revolving around an axis. Okay, so really this formula that I do that I just uh, created, um, I can write in place of I sub I and I sub F. Okay, so why don't we just do that quickly? All right, so now the final angular um, velocity will be equal to mmrm squared over two. The reason why I do this is because some professors like to um, see equations instead of even calculating the formulas. All right, so this is then going to be plus m1r1 squared, meaning calculating the actual number, plus m2r2 squared plus m3 r3 squared and this whole thing now is multiplied then by the initial angular velocity okay divided now by this is just wunderbar right this formula looks great now this is divided by the final value of the um, moment of inertia so it's basically just this whole thing i'm just going to copy it okay so it's just this whole thing put at the bottom okay now remember though that here we go just to save a little time remember though that these are all of the initial radius radii okay these are all the initial radii so really i could put a little sub i down there just to further define that i i i and i whereas now all the radii down here are going to be the final values okay and now once i have this i can now finally plug my values on in Okay, only one thing that I need to um, have this in radians per second. Okay, it'd be best if I, uh, if it would be best if I converted my initial angular velocity into radians per second, right? So where am I going to do that? Because there's no room left. Uh, so it's 20 revolutions per minute. And then for every one, for every one, I should say revolution, there's two 2 pi radians, so the revolutions cancel, minutes to seconds now, one minute there are 60 seconds, so there you go, right here is going to be, it's going to be 2 pi over 60, so uh, I always just like to do the conversions, even if I might not have to, depending upon the nature of the question, I just like to do it anyway, I don't want to remember when I can and when I can't, and so on and so forth, all right, this one you might actually not be, uh, be able to, you might not need to convert, but I just do it automatically. All right, so this is just going to be, um, so that, okay, so this, the final value up here is going to be 20, so times 2 pi, which is just 40 pi, 40 pi all over 60, and we can further, right, reduce this on down to basically 2 pi over 3, or 2 thirds times pi, okay? So that sounds good. Now we can start plugging everything on in, all right? So I'm probably going to run out of a little bit of space. Let me see if I can move this work on over a little bit. And let's see if, let's see what we can do. You know what I'm going to do to move this a little bit. Let me move this over here. All right. Just give me one second, guys. All right. Okay. So like I said, here is our, here's our big formula. Now we just got to plug everything in. So I'm going to do that up here. So this is the final value will be now. The mass of the, I'm just gonna go piece by piece. So it's gonna be 100, the mass of the merry-go-round, multiplied by the radius of 1.6 squared, all divided by two, right? Plus now the mass of the first uh, child, which is 22 times their radius, which is the same as the merry-go-round, 1.6, right, squared. You can actually take, you can really factor out a 1.6 the entire time here, if you wanted. Um, this is then going to be 28 times 1.6 squared, okay, plus then 
I'm going to write it underneath. So this is then going to be plus, um, what do we have? Uh, 33 times 1.6 squared. That's the whole summated value in there. There's four values. Then multiply that now by your initial omega, which we calculated to be two thirds pi. So there's now this whole thing in the bracket multiplied by two thirds pi. Okay. Then that whole thing, all divided by now the denominator value. So 100 times 1.6 squared all over 2 plus the first child, right? The 22 is at the same spot. So that's 22 times 1.6 squared plus now the 28, the mass of the uh, 28 kilogram child. But wait a minute. Where's their new location, right? It says it has the, ma the child who had a mass of 28 kilograms moved to the center. So if you take this child here and move him or her to the center, and they're located right here now, what is the radius of their mass in relation to the axis of rotation, which is at the same point? Zero. It's zero. Right? It's zero. That's how this changes, okay? That's squared. Zero squared is obviously just zero. And then I'm just continuing this on out. Plus now 33 times... Uh, what do we got? This is now 1.6, still 1.6, and that whole thing is squared. So I'm running into my own formulas, but this is getting a little nuts. You can definitely simplify this as you as you see fit. I'm doing it like this because a lot of professors like to see the whole entire formula, and you would probably want to simplify it a little bit anyway, but we're going to get the answer. So 100 times 1.6 squared divided by 2 plus 22 times 1.6 squared. I hit the log button instead. <laughs> 1.6 squared. Then plus 28 times 1.6 squared plus 33 times 1.6 squared. So the result of this multiplied then by our 2 thirds pi. Okay, we're going to get about 713 for the numerator. Then divide that now by the entire denominator. Okay, so now that's going to be 100 times 1.6 squared divided by 2 plus 22 times 1.6 squared. I'm not going to write the next one in because it's just zero. Plus then 33 times 1.6 squared. And let's see what we get. So I get about, so 2.653 or so. So about 2.65, and this will now be in radians per second, okay? So that's in radians per second. So now, Remember, though, they wanted it in meters per, uh, excuse me, not meters per second, revolutions per minute. So we just have to unconvert this now, right? So we're going to go now radians on the bottom, uh, revolutions on the top, two pi radians for every one revolution. And then we can undo the seconds, seconds on the top, minutes on the bottom, 60 seconds in a minute. So you basically take this answer, multiply it by 60, divide it by now, two pi. And what do we get? About 25, okay? So we get about 25, let me write that answer now. So in terms of, oops, in terms of the final value, we get 25.3, so 25.3 revolutions per minute, RPM. Okay, that will be the final answer. And that should make sense, because in the final case, right, the mass of the second child moved to the middle. So essentially, the this mass is not weighing down, you can think of, you know, it's not weighing down the rotation. All right, so that additional amount of momentum is then dispersed over these items now. The mass of the first one, the third child, and the merry-go-round in total. So it actually will speed up a little bit. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next problem. Take care.